there are three things that no one is talking about so that employees don't want to resign. It has been more than a year since the Black Lives Matter movement spurred many companies to acknowledge racism and inequality at work. And in that time, diversity, equity, and inclusion organizations like the one I work for, Inner Sight, have seen a huge uptick in employers interested in attracting and retaining talent from underrepresented backgrounds. I, for one, love the increased engagement in making our workplaces more equitable and inclusive, but in order to make noticeable progress where it counts, day efforts need more oomph in every way transparency, goal setting, financial backing, language usage, and more. All of these factors contribute to how potential hires and current employees gauge a company. S level of commitment and follow through to both supporting marginalized groups and ma king them feel welcome at work. According to in her site research, while such day visibility and miserability is important during the recruiting process, it later becomes crucial to the retention of employees. From March to May, we surveyed three zero 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 plus people on how much an employer s engagement with day matters to them when applying to a company, accepting a job offer and deciding to stay with an organization. Here are some of our most illustrative findings. These data points underline the importance of strategically implementing and communicating day initiatives. But how can employers use this knowledge to better support their current and future workforce? Here are three insights we at In Her Sight have gathered from the day work we do every day. The concept of publishing day data ISNT new, but how you do it matters enormously. Opt for transparency first. Always, according to Kamala Elliott, from our partner organization Greed 202, the numbers should be provided by title, location, and management versus by individual contributors. Often, companies provide diversity data for the whole organization, not mentioning that many of their diverse employees are disproportionately in entry, level, or operational roles. Provide richer, more insightful data, then communicate that information effectively and often. Dante tuck it away on a rarely visited corporate diversity webpage. Instead, share it with employees and on public-facing platforms alongside your plan to remedy areas that need more representation. Plan on updating these parties on your progress, or lack of, regularly. This is an ongoing conversation, and your continued engagement and honesty, without prompting, will bolster trust. Align financially with brands that speak to your day mission, internal policy, and culture support are paramount. But in May, Victoria Arodiagas or OLDN, Senior Policy Manager at AIDS United, reminded us that external partnerships can do serious damage to day efforts, namely if those connections conflict with a company as day messaging and goals. Here Arodiagas or OLDN speaking on supporting LGBTQ plus employees specifically. Companies need to engage in their own advocacy along the lines of not supporting. For example, when you make corporate donations, refuse to support politicians who engage in harmful anti-trans rhetoric or policies. If you are supporting harmful anti-trans politicians, you are in the end harming your trans employees and even harming your own ability to retain them. Instead, use your money to underline your commitment to diversity. Take it. In the past 51 years, the telecommunications company, which has a long-running supplier diversity program, has spent over $187 billion with businesses owned by certified minorities, women, service-disabled veterans, LGBTQ plus people, veterans, and people with disabilities. Does seeing that kind of commitment to community support matter to employees? Absolutely. It is time to refresh our approach to day messaging, starting with readability. One of the benefits of working at a day-focused company is that I read day statement after day statement from organizations of all sizes. The common flaw. Many rely heavily on vagueness and attempt to play it safe. No doubt and end up skirting the issues they were trying to solve. Blanket statements like we ensure all employees feel welcome here don't mean anything, especially if they beg other questions. How do you know they feel welcome? What do you do to foster that feeling? How would you respond if someone did and t feel welcome? These questions linger after a simple seven word sentence. Try approaching messaging this way. Instead of over-promising or empty promising, stick with plain, informed, and actionable language. If talking about race, gender, 
or other diversity issues that your organization feels uncomfortable to you. Consider that you feel uncomfortable ISNTAA requirement. Softfulness, empathy, and transparency are, regardless of the reason for the message, the end goal is for every person reading it to understand your values and how you plan to live up to them. Beyond readability, remember, too, that prospective and current employees are looking for signals of your support over they are all the time and sometimes in the simplest, most baseline ways. Ahead of an in her sight focus group, one woman told me this of applying to her current company. Their webpage was still very startup y but I definitely got the sense that I should just be myself and relax if I wanted to get a job there. I also specifically noticed that they had pictures of employees with bright hair, which is something I had to give up at my old job so that just made me feel comfortable. My favorite thing about this feedback is that it speaks to the reality of why focusing on day matters at work and why so many companies are still missing the mark. Employees from marginalized and underrepresented groups are looking for workplaces where being themselves their whole inseparable selves want to affect their careers or lives. That is not an outlandish request by any means. In fact, that bar is low, and we have a great capacity to deliver more. Beth Castle is the managing editor at In Her Sight.